Okay, today we're going to talk about hepatitis B treatment. These are the licensed correct medications for hepatitis B. It's important to re realize that there are only three main pills offered to treat hepatitis B. These pills lower the amount of hepatitis B virus in the bloodstream to zero or to negligible amounts as long as the patient keeps taking these medications. They are long-term medications. We put people on these medicines for years and years. I'm hearing far too often that you know patients are oh I've got some tenofovir and they're planning they seem to think they can take it for three months or six months. No. Always plan to use these medicines for a minimum of three to five years every day, one pill a day. That's the way they work. Lower your viral load down to none. Um, the three medications used worldwide are tenofovir dysproxyl fumarate, uh, baraclude enticovir, and vemlidi or tenofovir alafamide. These are the three medicines on the market. These are the ones that will lower your viral load to next to nothing. Now, it's really terrifying um, the mass of rubbish uh, that people think they can use to treat their hepatitis B. Um, I've seen people waving milk thistle bottles, um, Livalin pills, and they're convinced this is hepatitis B medicine. No, it's not. It has no effect on your viral load. It has no effect on the amount of uh, virus in your bloodstream. Um, people are literally going to chemists and buying anything that says good for your liver on it <laughs> and thinking it's, it's going to help their, their viral level go down. It won't. These are the medicines. Learn their names. Realize that that's what you need to take if your hep B is active or looking dangerous. Okay, it's that simple. Uh, don't be fooled by liver in 40s, my medicine, or milk thistles, my medicine, or some silly, you know, dietary supplement. No, it won't have any effect. These are the ones that take the virus out of the bloodstream and keep you safe for years. So, who do we give them to? Well, 80% of hepatitis B patients do not need these medicines. Their hepatitis B is inactive. You know, why is it that two-thirds of hepatitis B patients grow old and never get ill? It's because they have inactive hep B. So many patients, um, oh, I've got hep B and ah, I'm going to die. And they have no idea that they're inactive. Nothing's happening. They're fine. This is a very important point, you know, to know what kind of hepatitis B I have. Is it uh, high level or low level? So, if we see the hep B is looking dangerous, we will see that the liver tests and liver scans are not normal. If you've got normal liver tests and normal liver scans, you don't need medicine. Your liver is perfectly healthy. You know, we would think deeply about whether you need medicine. If your viral load is uh, low um, or medium, but inactive, it is under half a million and it's not having any effect on your liver functions or scans, we will wait for a while. And what about if you're young? Uh, hepatitis usually takes decades um, to affect the 20% that it does affect. So again, don't rush into this. If you're like 19, uh, you know, think twice before you just start medicating away. So for the 80% with great tests, great scans, low loads, for that 80%, we just monitor. We do blood tests every year or every six months. And we teach them, like, you know, don't drink yourself into an active stage. Don't use drugs until the virus becomes active. Um, 
don't become morbidly obese, don't live on junk food, love your liver. And so 80% don't need the virals, and these are the reasons why we don't use them. So who does need the antivirals? Um, well, if after 12 months of being told to get rid of alcohol, get rid of drugs, get rid of um, obesity, eat better food, if after 12 months we find that you still have Persistently high alpha mast, which is plus 50 to 150 to 500, whatever level. But if they're really high and constantly staying high, well, now we're thinking you need that hep B out of your system, you might need the antivirals. We always like to medicate if the hepatitis E antigen is present. If the E antigen is present, then we usually will see a um, very high viral load of, of millions, hundreds of millions. And this is dangerous. So again, we need to get those hundreds of millions down. If after 12 or 24 months of trying a better lifestyle, we see the liver is very stiff, the KPA is 10 to 20, we will then think about antivirals to stop that virus damaging the liver. And patients, once again, need to understand that uh, these antivirals are for the long term, they're not for the short term. So, what antiviral to use? If you just have hepatitis surface antigen and the E antigen is negative, so the viral load is sort of um, 10,000 to a million or somewhere around there, um, but you're seeing bad liver results, you're seeing bad scans, and these are the three. Uh, Baraclude, Enticovir, we often use for the higher loads uh, uh, to bring down the viral amount. Vemlidi, Tenofovir or Lafamide, this is used more for elderly ladies, uh, patients with weaker kidneys. Um, people with anemia, um, these would be patients we'd prefer to see on them. Uh, Tenofovir dysproxyl is pretty much a standard go-to drug. Um, and again, it will uh, lower your viral load. All these drugs will take your virus down to zero or, or nearly zero. Massive drops. We also supply this to hepatitis E antigen patients. It will, you know, I had a patient with 500 million level, went down to 5,000 within about two months of taking this. Um, that's what we do with antivirals. How to use them? Well, again, we, we carry on testing you at least once a year to check um, your liver function, make sure the ALT and the AST are becoming normal. Uh, we check a, a liver scan, see if the fibrosis KPA is improving. Um, uh, and make sure, of course, that the viral load is dropping dramatically. Um, side effects. There are side effects. About 1% have them. The point is, is that if we see a side effect, we can switch you around. Uh, Remlidy can be a little bit of high cholesterol. If you see a little bit of high cholesterol, you can use Benacol to lower it. Um, tenofovir. Um, we sometimes see kidney function and bone density in old ladies is, is not so good. Um, then we will shift you over to the Vemlidy. You see what I mean? Um, Baraclu. Again, it's about bone density and kidney function. But remember, you know, 1% have this problem. And, and very much we're seeing that it's focused in postmenopausal older ladies. Now, a lot of our patients are so poor they miss a dose. You know, I get a lot of calls from people who have missed a dose. So don't panic. Um, it takes two months to build a level of antiviral in the blood that suppresses, and it takes two months for the virus to come back. So if you miss a dose, just take the next dose the next day. If you're poor and you can't afford it for a month or two, well, just get back into buying it when you can. It will have no effect, uh, extra negatives, not there. 
Also, um, I had one patient, he was on Anticovir for many, many years, I think 10 years. But he kept drinking, he kept taking paracetamol, he still got liver cancer. It's very important to keep up a liver friendly lifestyle um, and realize that it's not a ticket to become a beast, take paracetamol, drink a bottle of wine a day like this chap was. Now, another drug is called Lamivudrine. This is a drug actually which is for HIV, but it works for Hep B. And in Africa, a lot of doctors, this is all they have. You know, they've got a big supply of it for free. They don't have Hep B meds, and they'll give you this, Lamivudrine, or Tenofovir. Now, with this drug, after five or ten years, there can be little resistances. The Hep B viral load can creep back up a little bit. So if you do find that happening, we'll just switch to a newer form of ten of a bit. Don't panic. If you're taking this, keep taking it. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, interferon. This is only to be used by people with the hepatitis B E antigen. Now about 60% of the time, six months of this interferon plus uh, Enticavir, it's usually what we use, we will kill off the E antigen. So it's a slightly different treatment regime for those with the E antigen. We want to kill the E antigen, it's something we can cure and kill off. And if we can kill it off, then you permanently have a much lower level. So uh, if you are E antigen positive, it's time to think about perhaps using this for six months along with your antigen. Use the two together. Um, to try to kill the E antigen uh, part of the virus. And those are your Hep B treatments, the actual medications designed for Hep B. Do not fall into a trap of thinking anything in a chemist that says good for your liver is going to lower your viral load of Hep B. These are the only drugs that will take a viral load of Hep B and prove them to bring it down from millions to hundreds, every time, for sure. That's what they do. So these are the drugs, uh, learn about them, know where, what they are, uh, request them, uh, buy them on the market if you have to, but realize that they are long term um, and that only 20% of the therapy patients should actually use them because there's no point committing to a lifetime or a decade or five years of medication if you don't need it. And that's that. Thank you very much.